So in pivot pickoffs, we learn to let the arm loosely lay back and sync up in the, in the plane of shoulder rotation, driving that back shoulder through our target. In roll-ins, we're starting to incorporate the lower half. Now we're working on creating separation. So keeping the hips facing forward and keeping the shoulders close at landing. By doing so, we're starting to create a segmentation component to the delivery, rather than allowing the hips and shoulders to both rotate together and start to create some low level patterns. So by sticking that landing, hips open, shoulders closed, now we can apply force to the ball over a very long arc of motion from all the way back here, all the way through release point. So that's the main point of Rollins is creating this separation between the back hip and the back and the front shoulder. Um, so there's a couple of cues and ways of looking at this. Um, one way to think about it is we're trying to create maximum distance between the back hip or the back knee and the back shoulder. So as you go through the roll-in, you're trying to create a maximum distance between the two. So that's one way of looking at it. Um, a common mistake that guys make when going through the roll-in is thinking that, you know, it is a separation drill, but thinking about it as just separation without a back leg drive component um, tends to reduce the transfer to your actual delivery. So just going through the roll-in drill, step and throw is great. You just worked on separation, but you just also trained your back leg to not have to do anything in your delivery. And it's a lot tougher to then transfer that to the next step, which is your actual motion. So that's a huge cue that we use when doing roll-ins is not just working on the dissociation between the back hip and the front shoulder, but it's working on creating an active drive off the back leg so that we can more closely mirror what we're gonna be trying to transfer to, which is our actual delivery. As you learn this drill, it's really helpful to start in the position with your arm up and elevated, just so you don't have to think about going through your whole handbrake and you can really focus on creating a separation between the back hip and creating a drive off the back leg. So that's a good way to learn the drill, learn the feel of the drill. But again, the point here is to transfer it to your delivery, not just get really good at a roll-in. So from there, there's a couple progressions that you can go through. The first progression is instead of starting here, you start right here. So you're still keeping the elbow up in the plane of shoulder rotation, but now you have to focus on the flip up into that high cock position. So you still don't have to fully focus on it, but it's creeping your way into your full arm action. So that looks like this. Okay, so that's a way to kind of begin to introduce your full arm action into the roll-in. And then finally, of course, we're building in our total handbrake. So from there, wherever you come set, that's the starting position and it's the same thing. So in college in 2013, I actually was fed up with the fact that I couldn't create a separated position at landing. So I actually came up with a drill that I called the separation drill, which was essentially what I'm showing you here. Um, it's very close to a roll-in, but I was looking at it as a way to basically force myself into these positions because I didn't know how to dynamically get into these positions. So what I did was I would go stationary, stationary start. So back foot forward. I told myself I'm gonna lock my hips forward. I'm not gonna let it stray from there. I'm gonna lock the back foot forward. I told myself I'm gonna preset my front shoulder as close as possible, not from my low back, from my T-spine. I'm gonna drive as hard, I'm gonna gather myself on the back foot, drive as hard as I can off the back leg and rotate as hard as I can through release. And so that was a way for me to basically force myself into those dynamic positions where I couldn't understand how to segment beforehand. So this was kind of the, now we call it a stationary roll-in, uh, just to keep it simple, but this was the separation drill that I originally came up with uh, prior to the roll-ins becoming popularized. Um, and this was basically how I tried to feel the segmentation. So for me, it was back foot forward, preset the upper half as close as possible. I'm trying to create that dissociation between the back hip and the front shoulder and hold that as long as I can gather and throw. From there, the way that I transferred it into my delivery, and I'm not suggesting everybody copy me because it looks very funky and this is a little unconventional, 
is I said, okay, I can't throw like that off the mound in a game. So I'm gonna come set as close as I possibly can to that feel. So that's where the back foot turned in came from. That's where the turning my front shoulder closed came from. And then I just kept it as simple as possible with a slide step. Um, so it was hip, hip, back hip forward as, far, as much as possible. Feel the dissociation between the two, upper half and lower half. And then just gather, drive, and throw. That's how that came about. But again, the separation drill was my version of the roll-in. I thought I had uh, the best transfer that I could possibly have to my actual delivery versus guys just kind of coasting through the roll-in, not actually getting the sequencing down, not actually using their back leg, and never thinking about how can I transfer this to what ultimately matters. Another common variation that we use with guys who really can't feel their center of mass out in front and the angle off the back leg is much like a rocker drill where there is a rocking back of the weight in order to feel the back leg load up. We call it a step back rolling. So what that is, now the weight's on your landing leg, you still lock the back hip forward, you still lock that front shoulder as close as possible, and we're trying to feel that dissociation. Now we step back, gather, load up, feel the back leg load up. Now we drive and throw. So if you're able to actually feel the dissociation, but now you're able to feel the back leg incorporate into the delivery versus just a lot of guys don't know what to do, don't know how to start the movement when they're just starting stationary or when they're just kind of coasting into the throw with a full step into the drill. The most common mistake that we tend to see with Rollins is guys have a hard time actively keeping those the back hip forward. So they have a hard time as they lock it in place and they get to that landing position and they sim simply don't have the internal rotation on the back leg to actually get that hip back hip open. So no matter how hard they try, they simply don't have the mobility in this case to keep that knee on target. So you'll see guys landing in this position, shoulders closed, but the hips are also closed because they don't have that internal rotation. So that's an indication that that guy probably has a mobility limitation and that's causing the mechanical restriction. So in that case, that's a guy you really wanna emphasize uh, hip internal rotation work with, soft tissue work around the hips. Another common mistake we see, not just in the roll-in, but in general, in any drill, throwing off the mound, full delivery, whatever, is the inability to properly apply intent. So as guys ramp up their intensity, they start to muscle up, they start to get that intensity from the wrong places. Uh, what you wanna be able to do is evenly ramp that intensity throughout the entire kinetic chain. Um, rather than, a lot of guys will, this, this is common if you have a, 80% throw that seems to be as good or even better than your max effort throwing. What that typically means is there's a break in the sequencing. You can keep the energy flow very sequenced at 80%. And the second you think max effort, what happens is you start to muscle up, break that flow of energy. And even if it's 20% higher intensity, a lot of times you'll see the same VLO or even lower VLO. So that's a sign of misapplied intent, not ramping up the intensity properly and trying to get that intensity equally from the lower half into the upper half, trying to get it all from the upper half. It's typically what you see when the velo spreads are not as even as they should be at higher intensities.